Well, for more, let's cross uh, now to our own Armin Georgian from our International Affairs Desk. Uh, Armin, why is this coming to a head now? Uh, well, because uh, there's this unprecedented spat between uh, the uh, leader of Armenia and his own military, uh, with uh, calls from for him to step down now, f coming from uh, the military. Unprecedented. And unprecedented, in a particularly if you think of you know that this is supposed to be a democracy. There was a velvet revolution in uh, 2018, so it is pretty big stuff, Francois. Uh, of course, uh, Nicole Pashinyan increasingly coming under pressure to resign since losing the war. But I think the reason he's survived so long, much longer than a lot of people expected, what is it now, three months already since the, the agreement was signed, um, he uh, he's hung on because we haven't seen a major shift within Armenian society as a whole. So I think what we should lack, look at is not so much the political fight in a narrow sense between the opposition and the government, but rather what is society as a whole feeling. Uh, and we haven't seen, we've seen crowds in the street, but nothing compared to the size of the crowds in the Velvet Revolution in 2018, when people were so fed up, they wanted to get rid of the old regime. When that kind of size of crowd is out in the street, that is when it becomes impossible for an incumbent to stay on in that time it was Serge Sarkisian, uh, but the, the Armenian society hasn't moved uh, to that kind of tipping point. And I think the reason is that a lot of ordinary Armenians are really between a rock and a hard place. Uh, obviously, the promises of the Velvet Rev Revolution for better uh, you know, standards of living, that hasn't materialized if you go outside the cities. Uh, uh, and it's not surprising that Pashinyan is not well, you know, hasn't been pretty coldly received when he's gone out into the provinces. At the same time, people understand that there is an attempt by the political opposition and the oligarchs who are allied to them to try come, to come back into power. And that's nothing that, you know, ordinary Armenians have nothing to gain from yeah, that Yeah, Armenia, either. a former Soviet mm. republic that's yeah. always maintained, even after this Velvet mm. Revolution, uh, it's good ties with Moscow. Uh, there's still, uh, what is it, a military agreement? And it's, yeah. and it's Russia that's brokering uh, the terms uh, of that deal that was signed recently with, with Azerbaijan. I know that Nikol Pashinyan has been on the phone with Vladimir Putin. Yeah, that's right, because there's now uh, yet another uh, spike in tensions between these two countries that are on paper allies. Uh, and this comes from uh, Pashinyan disparaging uh, Russian weapons in an interview. He was talking about the war and uh, obviously, this is part of a blame game, right? Who's Who really lost the war? It's been going on for three months now. Uh, but uh, Pashinyan says, said that Iskander missiles that had been bought from Russia were not effective. And that drew a stinging rebuke from Moscow. Uh, I just want to show you the reaction from uh, a high-level... Uh, uh, a high-ranking official in Russia's Duma, Viktor Zavarzin, saying, Our Iskanders are highly precise weapons. They have shown their effectiveness in numerous exercises. Pashinyan's words are an absolute lie. Um, so I suspect the phone call between Putin and Pashinyan had something to do with the spat. But I also don't think we should overstate the importance of this particular uh, spike in tension, Francois, because Russia really doesn't need to get into the nitty gritty of Armenia's political crisis. It's looking at the big picture. It's looking at what the future of its peacekeeping mission is in Nagorno-Karabakh. And it's looking at if it wants to stay beyond the initial five years in the agreement, how does it do that? What incentives does it offer Azerbaijan if it really wants to keep that foothold in the Caucasus and uh, push back against Turkish influence in the So you have about. on the one hand the president sacking the head of the armed forces, mm -hmm. on the other the generals calling for his resignation. What's going to tip the scales? Well, I think again, as I said, uh, it's kind of the mood on the street and is there a massive swing in Armenian society against Pashinyan or not. I think that's really the key thing. Or obviously, if you want me to speculate, then uh, I suppose some kind of actual coup. I mean, at the moment, what Pashinyan has said- That would be unprecedented. That would be unprecedented, but he, he's obviously using this as a rhetorical tool, right? To say, there's an attempted coup against me. An actual coup is when tanks surround, you know, an elected leader or parliament or something like that. That has not happened in Armenia. So either 
an, a real coup, not a rhetorical sort of a use of the word coup as Pashinyan has, has done, or as I say, a, a, a major shift in the mood on the street in Armenia, which makes his position untenable. But as I said, we have not reached that point in Armenia today. All right, Armin Georgia, many thanks for that update.